Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, we have been blessed with another morning that we can look into the Word of God and find application for our lives. Today is August the 5th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, I trust you have your Bible in front of you, maybe a cup of coffee. If you would, turn to 2 Timothy, and let's begin at chapter 2 and verse 22. Now, we'll read the text, and then we'll come back and investigate to see what hidden truths we can discover. Paul says, beginning in verse 22, flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, and peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but he must be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God, peradventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Now, Paul begins in verse 22 saying, I want you to flee these youthful lusts, these childish desires. And I would rather encourage you to follow righteousness, faith, charity, and peace. But notice, this is not with all men. This is with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. In other words, people who are truly seeking the truth. Have you ever been in a conversation with someone and you know that the very questions that they are asking are only asked because they're trying to defend their position. They're not truly seeking truth. They're just trying to entangle the discussion with hypothetical questions that have no answers. And that's what Paul is dealing with here. He says in verse 23, foolish and unlearned questions avoid. In other words, questions that have no answers. Those are foolish questions. Where did God come from? Who created God? Even questions like, well, if God is such a God of love, why does he allow war or rape or murder? And oftentimes what we'll do is we'll begin to answer with Christian church cliches or Bible verses, but these really aren't answers. And if we were going to be honest with ourselves, we would have to admit that there's many things that we just don't know. And it's okay to say, I don't know. And so he says, avoid foolish and unlearned questions. Don't pretend to know all things because if you try to answer a question that you truly are not skillful in, you only show your ignorance while attempting to show your knowledge. And so Paul says, avoid these things. He says in verse 24, you see the servant of the Lord must not strive. Be very careful to get yourself in a situation where you are arguing your faith because you're not accomplishing anything. Share the truth with them, but don't lower yourself to argue with them because that's really all that they want. And by doing this, Satan is using them to bring you frustration, grief, hardship, and sometimes maybe even confusion. But he goes on and he says, be gentle unto all men, apt, skillful in teaching. That's what apt means, skillful in teaching, patient with those that you are working with. Sometimes the questions that they ask are honest questions. And so we need to deal with them patiently and lovingly and in meekness, he continues, because we want to instruct those who are opposing themselves. They're placing themselves in a situation of opposition merely for the sake of opposition. 
And so even though you may be very passionate about what you believe, don't allow yourself to become overzealous in the truth that you're trying to present to them. Certainly don't allow yourself to get angry, impatient, or unkind. And sometimes, maybe most of the time, this means listening more than talking. But if they are truly seeking truth, they're going to be willing to hear what you have to say. Then they will take that before God himself and try to work it out. Because it might be that God is trying to bring them to repentance through you so that they will acknowledge the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Their eyes have been blinded and maybe you are the one that can bring them to the light of truth. Because up until this point, they have been taken captive by Satan at his will. And so the lesson that we learn here today is critically important because it's in how we deal with others. And we're going to know when someone is simply there to argue. We're going to know when someone is asking foolish and unlearned questions. We're going to know when we're casting our pearls before swine, but we're going to also know when we have come across a soul who is truly seeking for truth. And in those moments, friends, we should do as our text tells us this morning. We should not allow ourselves to strive or argue, but we should be gentle. We should be patient. We should be skillful in what we're saying, and we should exercise meekness as we instruct them and guide them back to the truth. May the Lord Jesus help us each as we strive to present his timeless truths to those around us who are so blind, so unlearned, and so lost. And may we remember as we deal with each of these souls to treat them just as we would want to be treated in this same situation. And if that is our guide, friends, if that is our rule, we will seldom fail. Now may the power of the Spirit be with you today, friends. May you walk in the love of Jesus, and may your journey be determined, consistent, and focused. I love you, friends. Now as Yahweh wills, and until tomorrow, I'll see you on the next video.